Welcome back to the Big Block Factory. It's a brand new day. We've had a few hours sleep. We've got a freshly rebuilt Big Block Chev engine here. If you missed last week's episode, we've been here before and we had a few problems, but we're back to square one, I guess, and we're ready to fire it up on the dyno again. She's all hooked up. There's jerry rigging in place. All the good bits are there and it's ready to be rerun in. We're here with Heath from Harrop. He's the boss man behind this creation here. If you're new to the channel or you haven't been following along, this is a special combo. It's basically a, uh, a new thing. It's a blower on a big block, but it's not a chrome blower and it doesn't have carburetors on it. What's so special about this setup, mate? Well, modern supercharger technology has really come a long way and we had a lot of fun working with you on the, the Holden project. Yeah. And when you had the idea to do a big block Chev, we both thought that's a great opportunity to put our modern intercooled supercharger with fuel injection and, and see what sort of numbers we can run. So it's our TVS 2650. It's running that forward facing 110 millimeter throttle plate, drive by wire, 10 PK belt, our heavy duty tensioner. So it's got all the right parts. Engine's been redone by the team here. Frank yep. and Lou and Jake and Bob and Brad, right. they did an incredible job. There's a, awesome. Yeah, a, a team of uh, team of experts really dug deep to get it back together for us, and now we're back day two, ready for some hits, and let's see what sort of numbers it produces. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And this cubic inch, it's not massive in big block terms, so at 454, um, the blower's going to be able to, I think, fill it adequately. Yep. We'll see where the boost numbers sit. It would have been great to be able to run this aspirated, but just the way the manifolding works, it's not the sort of thing we can change over in 20 minutes. Yeah. But we think this engine with this camshaft combination, naturally aspirated, is probably a, a 550 to 600 horsepower yeah. engine combination. Like we're not looking at a thousand horsepower yeah. aspirated motor. It's a very basic rebuild for for what it is. For uh, for most big blocks, it's a standard GM block, uh, rods, pistons aftermarket heads, a camshaft, just the usual valve train parts. So it's nothing, it's not a uh, like a 540 cubic inch engine or anything like that. It's 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 a, an everyday big block, as it were. So, um, and we'll see where we turn it to, but it's, it's probably like a 62, 6500 RPM type deal. Yep. So, so a street engine. People, street, people street love car. using that term. <laughs> Very streetable. It is, it's literally going to be for my street car. So um, it'll be interesting to see what sort of torque numbers it puts out, which is also tells the story, especially with a, a positive displacement blower. It, it is a lot about the way the power is delivered, not just the, the outright power. So we'll be able to see all that via Frank and his magic. So let's get into it. I've got my fingers crossed. It was a pretty harrowing day for me yesterday, as probably was for you guys as well. Um, Heath and the team have put a lot of time into this setup. It's it's basically a prototype. It's had the best in the business working on it, so um, we're really hoping to sort of prove its worth. So you might be able to buy it shortly if you're a big block guy. We might be able to. You will be. Able, you will be able to buy it once we work out that it works well. Then you probably will. No, it's exciting. This is one of one, so it's a, a full prototype. But we've got every confidence. We've got a lot of experience with these combinations, and um, I'm excited to make some noise. Yeah, sweet. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, guys. How are you? <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. A little lack of sleep, but that's something I can catch up on tonight. Yeah. So what's the process now, mate? You've got the engine in there, you're doing a run in, are you? So we've got the motor running. Um, so we basically just sink the cam sink and a few of the other bits and pieces that we've had apart back in now. Told the computer where everything's at and um, We'll just run the camshaft in for like 20 minutes at like 1800 RPM. Yep. And then we might just give the rings another cycle while it was apart. We just gave it a quick dunny brush just to not risk any chances of doing things, you know, or, or missing a, uh, one of the procedures. And we'll go from there. Sweet.
that's the 20 minute cam running process finished so we're now going to pull off the valve covers and uh, Frank's going to put the other valve springs back in it um, and we'll continue with the running process once that's done. Tell you what, Frank, you you make a bloody good coffee, mate. <laughs> well, if I can't build engines, I know I've got to pack up. <laughs> I reckon you'll be right. Frank's well on the way through the, the valve spring or inner valve spring install. Uh, so the process he, he's using is uh, all the rockers come off. He pressurizes the cylinder that holds the valves up, and then he's got his. Um, special tool that uh, I think he got when he was an apprentice. He's very smitten with it. Does the job real nice. Pulls down the valves, pull the collets out, spring off, then they simply inserts the, the third spring in this case. It's got a damper spring as well. And uh, reverse the process. And then rocker gear and everything goes back on and then just a lash adjustment before the valve covers go back on. So we're getting there. Alright, we're ready to go again and I can't tell, I don't think I've ever been this nervous in my life. It's, I'm losing it, but um, in good hands, so let's see what happens. Hey Frank, we're about to do some power runs. You pressing some buttons over here. What's actually going on on the on the superfly? So, um, <clears throat> as I open the throttle, I basically like to check my screen, make sure I got oil pressure and everything's looking good. And most importantly, the uh, servo on the absorber is got to work within a percentage up here, so it shows that there's enough pressure on the back of the engine or resistance on yep. the back of the engine and then I release the dyno once I'm ready mm -hmm. and it starts recording the run no different to if you had a power glide behind this car you've taken off in first gear you've done the first gear you've shifted into second your foot's wide open throttle it drops at the stall speed and I've chosen the stall speed to be 4200 rpm and then it will let the engine accelerate up to the high number, which is 6,200 RPM. And it's going to do it at a ramp rate of 1,000 RPM per second, which is a fast beginning ramp rate. Yep. Just so we don't put too much load on the engine, lets us establish the fuel map and the ignition map. Yep. And then we can slowly come back and slow it down. I would predict an engine like this would go down the quarter mile in top gear of a power glide or any other transmission one to one yep at about anywhere between three and four hundred rpm per second righto and that's what you want to try and simulate yep so you're closer to a tune-up righto awesome that's it cool thanks mate
Frank and Nadza have put it through a couple of pulls, as they call it. Um, just getting the fueling and stuff like that right. Um, now Frank's going to check the plugs for um, he, he, heat. He reads plugs for, for heat to see what how the tune is. So it's, um, we were discussing how they don't take any notice of the of the set oxygen sensors and whatnot at the end of the day because the plugs tells the whole story, which is kind of you, something you that's... Use, we do use the oxygen sensors, but at the end of the day, the spark plug is what is telling us what happens in the chamber. So that's what you want to try and read. You want yeah. to see it, you know, right at the most critical point of what's going on. So where we're at now, Frank, do you think we're on the right track? It's making some solid power, everything's all good? Yeah, well look, you got to start somewhere. I mean, yep. at the moment, we're not making power where we want to see because we're not going after power. At the moment, all we're trying to do is establish a tune-up. Yep. We don't have any data from a big block with a Harrop, um, even though it's a 454. We can steal some numbers from our Godzilla engine, which is 445 cubic inches. This is 460 cubic inches. And we're just trying to treat them similar, but they're never the same. Of course. But once we establish some numbers, then look, these spark plugs haven't even got any heat in them yet. Um, they still, they're still coming out brand new. Yep. So we're nowhere near where we need to be before we can work out the next step. This thing looks pretty fancy here, Frank. We usually just stuff them on a concrete wall and <laughs> away we go. Hey, look, that's all right. That's okay when you've got to do like maybe eight spark plugs. But, um, you know, I've been in America with the Prolong guys, and when you've got a gap of 120 spark plugs, trust me, you get sick of tapping them. <laughs> the old plugs all came out all right, and, uh, but we're going to swap over to Frank's uh, plug of choice. Uh, he's used to working with these plugs and, and reading them, so. Um, this is definitely Frank's show and we're going to do whatever he says. Frank, we've done a run, it's, everything's going well, and you're checking out the plugs. Can you just give us a quick explanation about why plug reading is so important when you're doing this? Also, what you're looking for too, Frank. Well, first of all, it's, it's important to have the right heat range, because the wrong heat range is going to tell us the wrong thing. Meaning, if you've got a, a, a spark plug that's hot, it's going to show heat. And once it shows heat, we can't tell where we are yep. as far as if are, are we too rich or too lean. Um, yes, we have an oxygen sensor to understand the number of air fuel ratio of where we're at, but it's more important at the moment establishing the tune up. We want to make sure that all eight plugs are the same and we don't have one cylinder that's more thirstier than the rest and then. You know, if we didn't know that and we just keep turning the boost up or we keep trimming the fuel back, that cylinder will be the first one to melt. So all I want to see for the first couple of runs, I don't care about the horsepower, we're just trying to make sure that we've got eight plugs reading the same. Okay. And you can do that with an EGT, but I prefer to do it with spark plugs. Yeah. Everyone has a different way of doing it, but that's just my preference. So Look, is everything looking all right? Looking good. Um, and I'm happy to put them back in, we'll make another run, we'll lean it out a bit more and we're at 850 horsepower at the moment, we've still got more RPM, we've still got more fuel to tune and we've still got more timing to put in. Yeah. Cool. Alright. Hey, what do you reckon Luke? You're pretty impressed or what? I tell you what, I'm not as impressed as if we had uh, a green top from the wreckers because I tell you, a 2k barrel would annihilate this. <laughs>
Well, we've decided to call it there. The engine made uh, 940 horsepower um, at about 20 psi, I think, with that current pulley setup, and 700, 750 foot pounds all the way through the the, the pull range, which is starts about 4,000 to 7,000. So obviously, like that's plenty for me, and um, we've we've kind of I've decided to call it at that because after all that's happened, I don't really want to. Uh, ruin my life this afternoon um, obviously the, there's plenty more in it but just maybe not in this particular engine right now so I'll let Frank run you through that what his uh, take is on what's happened we've done about 12 uh, dyno pulls uh, plugs out many times checked them obviously compression tests multiple times so everything everything's is still great so we're pretty happy about that after all that's happened but you want to give us your take on the on the engine. Thanks, Sal. Yeah, no, look, you know, it was a good result after a bad start, and you definitely don't want to end the the dyno session by just pushing the factory block to a point where you know yeah. it's it's going to push the crankshaft out from underneath it. So this block has obviously got its limitations. Yes. It, it is. It's a '78 model block, so it's um, that's yeah. We don't know how thick the balls are. We don't know much about it. Yeah. In the short time that we had it, but look, at the you know the result was great. The Harrop blower, no doubt, is is going to prove that these things can make awesome power, awesome torque. For us, the objective was to put it together, make it work, and here we do. You know, here we have it, like something that makes just under a thousand horsepower. I mean, I was happy to squeeze for a thousand, but you were happy to stop. But I've never made that much with a hydraulic flat tapped cam. Yeah. At seven thousand, I mean, no doubt you'll, um, whether you, you know, you'll have a photo of the, the dyno sheet. It's still climbing, so it really needs to go to seventy five hundred before it was going to roll over. Is it smart to do that? I don't think so. A hydraulic cam, it's got moving components inside the lifter. It's not like an LS where they've got lightweight rockers and lightweight. They're designed in that era of a hydraulic roller cam. I just felt like it was a good point to stop here and say next time, you know, maybe a dart block yep. and a flat tappet or a roller cam and these, these things will punch out 1,200 horsepower, not even trying. Yeah, cool. And Heath, what are you, um, what's your take on, so your primary objective here was to test the prototype blower kit. Um, so we've got things like pulley drive system which is obviously yep. can be an issue with big blowers like this and your intercooler system how did you find that came out well fantastic we didn't have any issues with the blower or the drive system um, you're right it needs more belt for a, a blower like this on a, on a 427 454 cube engine so it's a 10 pk it's actually running our heavy duty billet tensioner, so it's got more torque and travel than you yep. see with some of those factory tensioners, and that makes a huge difference. It's a nine and three quarter inch lower pulley, and we're at, I think, 80, 85 on the top, so it's about a three to one ratio. Yep. And the TVS 2650, it's proven itself across many different engine applications now to flow air efficiently. The inner cooler's working exceptionally well like I think we're only seeing over the run a delta of about 20 degrees start yep. to finish um, keep in mind we didn't put any ice through it that was no. just a, a consistent tap water temperature correct yeah I, I could guarantee you it would have picked up 20 30 horsepower with ice and the air, the air intake's obviously not optimized either in in the room like this with the way the, the throttle blade is exposed but to have our drive system and have the supercharger flow the way it did it made really good power for the engine combination that it is it, yeah. it arrived as somewhat of an unknown like you had it put together obviously al but the the camshaft was an unfortunate yeah. failure very early on but to get it back together overnight the guys at dandy frank the whole team have done an incredible job to turn it around i hope the phones aren't ringing on, <laughs> on this, <laughs> this video goes to air that people want to uh get a 24-hour turnaround but we made it happen <laughs> and we got back onto the dyno and showed a really good gain. We didn't have the opportunity to run it naturally aspirated, just the way the manifold is secured with, with sealant, but this would be a water. That would make between 5 and 550 horsepower. You know, it's only yep. got a small hydraulic camshaft. Yep. Um, it doesn't have a lot of lift like a, 
again, an LS in that camshaft would easily have over 600 thou lift. I think we have 550 thou lift. Yep. So and an LSA of one ten, like the the cam was a it's a last minute deal. It was, it was, last, it was all we Take could what find. You could get yeah. cam, two yes. hours before everyone shuts, but absolutely. So it's incredible that we've got back onto the dyno. The supercharger's got a lot of headroom in it, and you're extremely happy with what we've done as a package. Yes, and so I feel like it's a win win. Yep, I think I think we're. Uh... I think it's the right time to call it. Yeah. yeah, look, and keep in mind, I mean, I get greedy because I'm pulling spark plugs out <laughs> and I'm seeing we haven't even burnt, we haven't even put any heat in the plugs yet. Yeah. So I still see a bunch of horsepower, but I get, you know, to, to, to let's finish it on a good note while the block's in one piece because we don't know the limits of one of these blocks. Yeah, true. Well, I'm happy and um, also incredibly thankful to, to you once again, Frank, and oh, your team for for uh, you know, going out of your way to make this work. And um, I know he's also very thankful because this was sort of oh. partly to test this uh, supercharger kit. So without that engine working, we would have been uh, not doing much at all. So uh, we're, we're car guys helping car guys, and that's what we do. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks to you, Heath, for your great work with this, uh, and also the team at Harrop, of course. Um, I think it's going to look fantastic in the crown and uh, looking forward to getting it back and bolting it in. Can't wait to see you do a skid. <laughs> yeah, well, we never do skids, do we? <laughs> We're going to take a little holiday to Queensland and I'll get, I'll get Frank to, yeah. to do the test run on it. That, that'll, that'll work well, I think. If you like big old American iron and you're into big block chevs, then you can register your interest in this um, supercharger kit with Harrop. So head on over to their website. Uh, also check out Harrop TV on YouTube and you'll probably see more of Frank and Heath on there weaving their magic with big blowers which everybody loves check out Luke at Full Boost great channel always good for a laugh he didn't even bring any two Kuke barras this time which is a bit disappointing because I'm sure it would have eclipsed this on the dyno thanks for watching and we'll see you next week We kind of got a bit of an idea what your average chrome blowered big block chev makes in reality, so very, we're hoping to. It's a very broad term, cr chrome blower. Though. It is like a very broad term. You it's, can put a chrome blower on it on a Ecotech. It's a little bit blower. nasty of me to refer to them as chrome blowers, because uh, but uh, we're talking a modern supercharger like this versus your old. Uh, tooth belt driven uh, 871, 671, that sort of thing, which is basically a root blower derived off a two stroke engine um, that, that was literally used to blow the exhaust gas out of the engine. So their primary purpose wasn't actually to supercharge an engine originally, but yes, they work, but does this work better? That's what we're trying to find out.